Hello and welcome to Badger's Talk Live, which, begin, which brings exciting happenings, resources, and talent from your UW flagship campus to the people of Wisconsin and beyond. I'm Andrew Busker, originally from Rockford, Illinois. I'm a master's candidate in both urban regional planning in the College of Letters and Science and in public affairs at the Robert M. La Follette School of Public Affairs. Uh, please introduce, I would like, sorry, I'm pleased to introduce Gavin Luter, Managing Director of the University Alliance. This impactful program leverages faculty, staff, and students' expertise to work with communities across Wisconsin to answer the growing question of how to attract economic development to cities and towns with declining populations. In today's Badger's talk, Gavin will provide an overview of the program and introduce us to numerous community representatives from participating cities, counties, and Main Street districts from all over Wisconsin. They will provide examples of university year projects and outcomes that have shaped their communities for the better. After the presentation, Gavin will take questions you may have about the program and or how you can connect with University Alliance. Please welcome Gavin Luter. Thank you so much, Andrew. I really appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to do this presentation today. Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and, and get started. I'm going to introduce you to the University Alliance and the University Year Program. But first, let me identify the, the problem that we were trying to address. So on one hand, local governments in the state of Wisconsin and across the United States, um, the scopes of challenges that they deal with are just huge. Everything from sewer to garbage pickup to uh, local education and running schools. Um, but they often are sometimes the smallest and leanest form of government. So they often have capacity and or bandwidth issues, which leads them for a desire for thought partners. And usually they turn to external cons consultants for all these issues. So we knew that those kind of issues were going on in local governments. Also in universities and colleges, we have a lot of experts, but they're incredibly siloed. We have students who really want and need real world experiences. And also everybody at the university wants their work to make an impact. So the question was, how can we connect existing courses and other university structures to single local government over an entire academic year to work on those critical projects identified by those local government, city, county, village, town staff, and do so at a scale that magnifies the value for all? That's why we put together the University Alliance. Because the University of Wisconsin-Madison is so big, we created a networking group of people who are interested in working with local governments. Rarely will you see at, a, at the same table at UW-Madison, the Division of Extension sitting next to Computer Sciences, sitting next to the Institute for Research on Poverty, sitting next to the School of Business. So what we wanted to do is create these face-to-face -face relationships on campus and bind them together with this idea of improving local governments and cities across the state of Wisconsin. But not just that, now that we had our house in order, we wanted to create something that was really easy for local governments to be able to then tap into the resources of UW-Madison easily. So we created a four-step process called the University Year Program, where local governments, any local government across the state of Wisconsin, this could be sewerage districts, regional planning commissions, school districts, cities, towns, villages, counties, really any form of local government, they can just apply kind of out of nowhere and say, hey, we wanna work with UW-Madison on a variety of issues. This could be on everything from recruiting and retaining teachers uh, all the way to, can you help us make our downtown look better? Um, and then once we work with them over a period of time to scope and scale those projects, then we try to match them usually with courses at UW-Madison who can work on those projects over an entire academic year. Um, and then the students produce some sort of deliverable um, and uh, you know, some kind of concrete valuable thing for the local government where they can get access to cutting, cutting, kind of cutting edge resources and also uh, innovative best practices. Um, we have worked with a variety of communities across the state of Wisconsin, everybody from the city of Monona, Dane County, of course, here in, in our hometown to Green and, uh, and Pepin counties, um, all the way up to Egg Harbor and over to Milwaukee. Um, and actually we have a couple of new partnerships that are launching with Wanakee, Marathon County and Racine County uh, in the next academic year. So we have produced 185 projects that were done by students, supervised by faculty. We've had about 1300 students involved in about 80 different courses. 
what kind of, uh, let me just give you kind of the snapshot of what a typical year would look like. Um, in the city of Monona, we worked on these four areas, everything from parks and recreation to housing and economic development. We had uh, 23 classes, 30 projects done, um, and about just shy of 500 students involved. In Dane County, which was our second engagement, we worked on everything from you know, frequent users of county services, how do you find the patterns of people who are using county services, to water quality and nutrient management, to everything um, in between. 26 projects that year. Um, we actually had fewer students, um, but, uh, but we engaged about the same amount of uh, schools, colleges, and disciplines, and about the same amount of faculty members. And then in Greene County, they completely uh, <laughs> blew off the lid of what we thought was possible. We matched 50 projects. And if you notice, we actually got better at matching students. We had fewer students producing more projects um, because not the entire class needed to be involved in the entire project. Um, and we had 21 faculty members involved in 25 distinct courses involved in Greene County. And they really threw the gamut at us. Everything from consolidation of 911 centers to, um, you know, to how do we create a new teacher mentoring program to kind of a, a downtown improvement plan to connect downtown with nature um, in Monticello. So this was what Greene County looked like. And then Pepin County, um, yeah, it, we, we, we started off with 17 projects. We actually ended with 25 projects in only three areas. And we had about 150 students involved and we did projects around sustainability, water quality specifically, and economic development. So this is what a general um, engagement looks like. But what you're gonna hear today is experiences from our students, our staff, and in particular, uh, and I would argue most importantly, our community partners um, that are going to talk about what the, their experience was like specifically in the areas of economic development. This is what this uh, Badger Talks Live is about, is showing the kinds of projects that we've done around economic development for different community partners. So you're going to hear from people from Greene County and Pepin County today. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Andrew Brusker, who kicked us off, um, and he's going to talk about his experience in Durand which is a city in Pepin County. So with that, Andrew, take it away and tell me when to advance your slides. All right, thanks, Gavin. First, I'd like to start by thanking Maria Hall, who is an alum of our planning program and was, was one of our contacts in Pepin County. Our planning workshop had two projects in Pepin County during the fall 2019 semester, and she was heavily involved in the work of uh, my colleagues who have since graduated. And today I'm talking about the downtown redevelopment uh, plan for Durand, Wisconsin. So next slide, please, Gavin. Okay, so the city of Durand, in case you're not familiar, um, it's the county seat of uh, Pepin County. It's the largest community that is in the smallest county within Wisconsin. Um, it, it's close to many large communities in the region and serves as the county seat, like I mentioned. And there pictured on the slide is the historic courthouse located in a park downtown. Next slide. Okay, so this map shows the study area for our redevelopment plan for downtown Durand. It includes six blocks of down, um, down Main Street, River Street, Madison Street, and along the Chippewa River, and the whole study area covered about 18 acres. Based on this geography, we, we found two big issues, flooding and funding. As you can see here, almost the entire downtown district is within the floodplain of the Chippewa River, there are many more details in our report about the relationship between Durand and uh, the Chippewa, and the regular flooding was a main driver our team considered when drafting the recommendations. Um, let's move on to the next slide for an example of flooding that we see downtown. So one back, please. Kevin, you could go back one more slide. Thank you. Um, there we go. <laughs> so um, you can see here within a year, uh, Duran sees uh, some springtime flooding. This was a pretty bad year. It's not always like this. Um, but the US Geological Survey monitoring indicates that in the last 90 years, there have been over 100 days where the Triple River has flooded at least some portion of downtown Duran. Um, the primary reason for this flooding is because the Triple River is undammed from Eau Claire all the way down to its confluence in the Mississippi River, which is about 60 miles away. Now, ecologically speaking, having a large portion of the river undammed is a good thing. Um, however, uh, predictions from the Wisconsin Institute for Climate Change Impacts indicates that Durand can expect an increase of flooding during the spring and winter months as the magnitude and frequency of rainfall events increases in these 
seasons. Next slide, please. So this redevelopment plan aimed to help the city of Durant promote economic development, increase quality of life, improve streetscapes, and increase recreational opportunities in the area. It includes broad opportunities and detailed ideas to increase investment for redevelopment and revitalization in the downtown area. The uh, next couple of slides will give you an idea of some of the actions communities can do for their downtown. So here we have um, strategically designed streetscapes. Um, so this was one of our recommendations where Duran could add uh, street trees and amenities such as planters, benches, lighting, bikes racks, um, designed trash bins, um, all to create a more uh, walkable, people-oriented downtown. Um, so we have on there sticky streets, and that means that the streets are um, inviting people to slow down, to linger, and to enjoy the surrounding environment, which will invite people uh, to spend more time exploring the local businesses and venues downtown. Uh, we also recommended adopting a uh, form-based zoning code, promoting local agricultural vendors, uh, widening sidewalks, and cultivating downtown green spaces for event programming. Um, so let's move to the next slide here. Uh, another recommendation of ours um, was providing more downtown murals. There's a few that were down there already that are beautiful, and we wanted to expand that opportunity for the rest of downtown. Um, and adding murals um, engages local artists, community groups, and school arts departments in the downtown revitalization efforts. Uh, maintenance is generally low for murals, and with proper surface prep and materials, they can remain in a good condition for about 25 years. Um, so we'll move one more to my last slide here. Um, and so we have the report already on the University Alliance website. And um, so if you have the time, I recommend you taking a look. It's got all of the Pepin County um, resources right there. And so our report um, is the Downtown Revitalization and Redevelopment Plan for Durand. So I'll take it back to you, Kevin. Great, thank you so much, Andrew. And I also wanted to say a special shout out and thanks to Scott Rasmussen. I didn't know if his uh, schedule was gonna permit him to be here, but the city administrator for Duran is here. Scott Rasmussen, do you wanna just quickly say hello? We have about 10 seconds. Hello, happy to be here and uh, happy to plug anything for the university program. It was, uh, it was a great program. Real pleasure to work with Andrew and his team did a great job, others as well. And a special shout out again, I'll shout out again to Maria as well for making this work. Be happy to answer any questions later. Great, thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate your time. And I'm also glad that Andrew said that all the reports are available online. That's something that a lot of people don't realize is that most of these reports that our students do, they're openly available uh, on our website. So check that out at the end. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to our colleagues and Extension. We're so glad that Extension is now part of UW-Madison. Um, the Big Badger family continues to get bigger and we're happy um, to have Bill Ryan and Victoria Solomon uh, present. I'm gonna start off with handing it over to Bill um, and then Victoria is gonna come in later. So hand it over to you, Bill. Thank you, Gavin. And great presentation before, really, really good work. Um, good afternoon, I'm Bill Ryan with uh, the, the UW-Madison. UW Division of Extension, there we go, that's correct, uh, as a Community ed Economic Development Program Specialist. And I do a local research to help inform economic development strategies of the small towns around the state and some big towns too, like Milwaukee and Superior and other places. Uh, with me is Victoria Solomon, who will introduce herself in a second. Uh, but just a few quick trends about Wisconsin. There are about 200 towns the size of Broadhead, which is 3,000 people, uh, 200 towns between 1,000 and 5,000 population. And they all had pretty robust downtowns as late as 1980. But then came the big box stores and the shopping centers and, and other reasons. And, and some of the downtown businesses slowly started closing up shop and, and went away. Um, by 1990, most big stores had, had just disappeared entirely from many downtowns and replaced by box stores and shopping centers and the like. Now we have Amazon in the, in the wings and we have uh, delivery from stores, warehouse clubs and other kinds of shopping. So what do we do with a place like Broadhead? And that's where we're going to start here and talk about our project and market analysis. Victoria, do you want to talk about Broadhead? Yes. So thank you so much. Um, another example of the university program being involved in community and economic development 
is the work done in the City of Broadhead downtown market analysis. For some quick context, the City of Broadhead is in southern Wisconsin between Madison and Illinois on the border of Green and Rock counties. Represented by the red dot on the map there, it has a population of about 3,300. The community interest in conducting a downtown market analysis came about because community members recognized a need for an engaging way to look at economic opportunities, particularly in the downtown area. I'll hand it back over to Bill to do a brief overview of the downtown market analysis process. Next slide, please. Well, the process has um, been unchanged for the past 20 years, which is going to be one reason why we're going to update the toolbox very soon. But this is a, a protocol that's been followed by many communities around the country to look at understand the community uh, data uh, information about its inventory of businesses, um, its trade area characteristics, getting gathering information, followed by a, a part that uh, involves the community, where the community provides information through survey research, what they want to see in their downtown, uh, doing supply and demand analyses and uh, looking at peer communities, visiting those places. So a lot of this is gathering information, but the real heart of this is taking that information and using it in a learning environment. So instead of uh, doing um, essence consultants going back and taking the data and running a report for the community, we engage the community and the study group in the community and students to look at the data and take ownership of this project and then develop recommendations that are homegrown. And that's the, the, the exciting part of this is that uh, the old model doesn't work anymore where we use the secondary data relying upon all of the, the different creative ideas that come out of the community is very important. This was developed about 20 years ago and um, it's, we call it a community-led analysis as opposed to a consultant-led analysis. So we don't come in as experts, but we come in as learners along with the participants. And it's been a very successful model. In fact, I'd like to suggest that this is probably the, the most fun economic development activity that a community can do because everyone has the same uh, uh, preference to have their downtown look good and be a proud place to take your relatives and friends when they come into town. And the other thing about the students, and you'll get into this in a second, uh, Victoria, is the uh, ability of the students to bring in some creative ideas that were never there before. They're in, in the te textbooks and the, in the classrooms learning about what are the different um, trends going on in cities, and they can take that back to places like Broadhead and uh, apply them in small town Wisconsin. Victoria? So this is very much the Wisconsin idea in action. And there's a lot of value, particularly for rural communities to hear the perspectives of students. At the same time, providing on the ground experience helps in educating and developing people who will have a valued and increased capacity to work on these issues in the future with a deeper understanding of what's happening in rural issues now and in the future. Next slide, please. In community, the downtown market analysis is a living document, a tool for the community to use to promote economic development. A couple months after the Broadhead report was completed, I had one-on-one -on -one conversations with some of the key community stakeholders to check in on the impact of the market analysis. And so some of the quotes from there are up on this slide. And some of the things that they brought up was that it was beneficial in bringing people together and building networks. It was useful both to prospective entrepreneurs and existing businesses and making adjustments based on consumer interests. The photo on this slide is actually the new Broadhead Business Center. The new owners shared that they reference back to the market analysis and determining what businesses are needed and what demand fits the building. So thanks for the opportunity to provide this quick overview. I'll hand it back over to Gavin. Great, thank you so much. And I, I think the thing to highlight here is that our colleagues in Extension have been doing these things for a really, really long time. I mean, we're just really happy to be doing it in partnership with the University Year Program. I think that's a, an important thing to highlight is we're taking things that UW-Madison has been doing for a long time. And we're just trying to make them more accessible and available to communities and bring students into the fold. So thanks a lot, Victoria and Bill. I really appreciate your work. Um, at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Jordan Nordby, who's head of the Monroe Main Street Program. We worked on a project about marketing um, the Monroe Farmer's Market. So take it away, Jordan. All right. Thank, thanks, Gavin. Hi, everyone. Um, as Gavin said, my name is Jordan Orby. I'm the director for Main Street Monroe. And we actually worked on uh, two different projects, both for our farmer's market. One was working with an MBA student and doing business planning for our um, farmer's market. Um, those of you who don't know, uh, we're one of 35 Main Street communities across the 
state of Wisconsin. Uh, we're a 501c3 nonprofit and we really handle anything and everything within our downtown district. Uh, the farmer's market being one of the key components. Um, second project that we did for the farmer's market was we worked with the life sciences communication course uh, class, a capstone class, which really focused on behavioral communication and creating you know, an entire marketing project for our um, farmers market. And um, I'm just still so in awe of the university program um, because it feels like, especially for, for a nonprofit our size, we're always reacting, we're always responding. Um, and this was really the first time that we were put into a position where we got to say, you know, what are our goals? Kind of, where are we, you know, dictate. Um, and I, I mean that in the, the most positive way of, of where does this project need to go um, for future growth. And um, so this life sciences communication course had uh, eight different groups. They focused on, you know, research and proposals and um, how do we increase attendance? How do we bring awareness about the farmer's market, better knowledge for it? Um, what is the current landscape? You know, what are the situational things? Um, what should our target audiences be? And they create took all of that um, and they created creative plans. Um, you know, what are the strategic implementa implementations for us? Um, and then the recommendations. Um, and they did it all working within a very realistic budget, um, which tied into a little bit of the, the second project. But, you know, for us, where it's boots on the ground, that was just, um, you know, so, so instrumental and, um, the best part is that we've been able to mix and match and very much what Victoria and Bill were saying is that we had ownership of this uh, project at the end and it's become a living document for us, um, especially now that we're a couple of years out. Um, the dates fell that we couldn't really implement a lot for the 2019 season and we had planned more for the 2020 season and and then there was COVID. Um, I, this has really been the first planning cycle where we're mixing and matching and we're taking slogans and we're taking these recommendations and um, you know, using it as a living document to, to improve our market and to focus on, you know, the things that we need to focus on. And um, I would say working with this class um, really brought a lot of validity to the project um, just because it was a capstone and they had the dedicated um, time to work over this for a semester where you know, we have um, interested parties and uh, people who are committed, but we were maybe at the point where we're not even sure if we, um, you know, do we know what we don't know? And um, this class, you know, created um, answers for, for a lot of that stuff. So um, I can't speak highly enough about it. And obviously we're, we're planning on implementing it, like I said, so a lot of, a lot of wonderful things um, that have, that have come from this and, um, the, the entire uh, project from getting funding for the project um, just to having it be at our local market has been monumental. Great, thank you so much, Jordan. I really appreciate your help um, in, uh, in telling us your experience with the program. Um, I also know that you worked with uh, a separate class as well. Um, and I just want everybody to know, like when you, when you, you know, kind of looking at this, like, you know, uh, not all projects work 100% perfectly. Jordan had like a really great experience with one class and like a so-so experience with another one. And and I think it's, uh, when when he talked to me about it, it was kind of like, you know, th this entire process was helpful to at least get us to stop and think about things. He was like, you know, it might not all be perfect, but like it really helped us move the needle forward on a lot of things. And in particular, they're going to be using a lot of that branding activity uh, or uh, projects and uh, products that our students did. Because I think, Jordan, they actually, they gave you the actual documents, like the original files. And they said, here, you can use it. Um, take it all. Uh, is that right? All right. Yep. Yep. That's exactly right. So these these eight different groups created, you know, the, the branding campaigns and marketing and, um, you know, specific budget breakdown. So that's all stuff. Um, definitely kind of behind the scenes we, we worked on a lot or we used a lot last year. Um, but, you know, going back to your point with with the two different classes and kind of the um, dichotomy of, of the end results, I, I think it just speaks so highly of the fact that, you know, we had one experience that was a little meh where things didn't quite click. 
but the other one clicked so well that um you know i'm i'm still just such a fan of of this opportunity that that was provided to us great thanks a lot jordan i really appreciate your um your recount of all this and i just think it's important for everybody to know you know like we're 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 all humans right we we have good and bad so i i wanted people to know that um, but I think overall your experience has been good. So I appreciate that, Jordan. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Kara Carper, the Executive Director of the Green County Development Corporation to talk about the projects she was involved in. Kara. Thanks, Gavin. Hi, I'm Kara Carper, as Gavin said, with Green County Development Corporation. Green County Development Corporation is a countywide economic development organization. So we cover the whole county of Green County and we work to build the economic future of Green County communities and businesses through public partners, public-private partnerships, just like University Year. We first heard about University Year back in, in 2017, and we were chosen, Green County was chosen as a University Year partner for the 2018-2019 school year. But planning started, um, George, or, um, Gavin mentioned this is actually a three-year process, so planning started a year prior to that, and then we followed up after. So we had, we had it was actually a three-year process. Uh, my job in this was the official, I was the head cat herder of Greene County. Uh, so I was basically the liaison between the, the university year office uh, and our communities. Uh, as Gavin mentioned, we had 50 projects, which is kind of amazing. Um, those, those projects were actually chosen by our communities. All the projects in Greene County were identified by our communities. So it was really a bottom up approach uh, and the, so the communities were very much invested in the outcome. So as you heard from Victoria and from Bill and from Jordan, they were very much, the communities were very much in, invested in this process. Um, one of the things if you're considering doing university year um, is the importance in that first year of determining what the deliverables at the end will be so that the, the faculty understand, the students understand, but also the community understands. Of course, you're going to get a wonderfully written report from those students. Uh, that we were lucky enough because it wasn't a COVID year. So the, the students actually came to Greene County and did presentations of their reports and of their recommendations, which was really wonderful. Um, but, but be very clear on your deliverables so that, that everyone's expectations are met. Um, so as I mentioned, I was the head cat herder, um, but we had some wonderful tuna fish to offer. So as I mentioned, as Gavin mentioned, we had 50 projects, but we pitched more than 85. So once the communities got thinking about what projects they might want to move forward with, the, the ball just started rolling and rolling and rolling. We probably could have come up with hundreds of projects, but um, then that probably wouldn't have made Gavin very happy. So we, we were able to, he was able to match 50 projects with us, which was incredible. You think about that, 50 projects, trying to keep all those balls in the air. And Gavin and Kelly in the university office did a great job of that. Um, so I wanna talk specifically about a countywide project that was done for uh, our Green County Development Office. Um, as I mentioned, we're the lead economic development agency for the county and we get occasionally get requests for proposals from developers. And so when you get a request for a proposal from a developer, usually the turnaround is really quick. So this afternoon I might get a request and it's due tomorrow morning at eight o'clock in the morning. Seriously, it, that's how they roll. Uh, and I never had a very good way to pull all that information together quickly because that information changes. And so we worked with the uh, uh, class at, at Urban and Regional Planning and they took on this challenge. And I didn't really know what they were gonna do. I mean, that you kind of hand it over and say, this is my problem, can you help us? And so they provided a great solution that, that really keeps on giving. It was in the form of a spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet has all the information that is commonly commonly asked in our request for proposals with links to find the information. So they, they got all the, the most recent information was there and then the link so that I could go once a year and quickly update all of those numbers, which oh, I never had time to do that. It was something I always wanted to get done and never got done. Uh, so we've got this wonderful, if you geek out on spreadsheets, you would just love what those students put together for us. It was just, it's just beautiful. And then along with that spreadsheet, they created this brochure. So you'll, you'll see in front of you um, some of the information that they put in the brochure. They kind of took out the, the juiciest bits from the spreadsheet and put together this brochure. So you'll see that here the Green County by the numbers, some of the positive attributes of Green County. Next slide is just important demographic information that, that is important when you submit to a developer who might be considering about landing in Greene County. Uh, the next slide is about industry industry information. So 
uh, what sort of industries we have here in Greene County, what sort of workforce issues we might have. And then the final slide is um, our incentives and, and programs that we have that can help developers as well as, as infrastructure. So they know um, what sort of electricity, what sort of sewer and water um, opportunities that we have. So it's a beautiful project. Uh, as you can see, it was sorely needed, um, but we just didn't have the time or the capacity to get it done. Uh, it's an incredible amount of information and it takes an incredible amount of time. Those, those students worked very hard to pull all this information together. And again, it's something that I can easily update. So they gave me really, it was a wonderful gift. Um, and they um, got, uh, as you'll see, as you heard, they really got some of our projects in Greene County unstuck. And I think in, in um, to benefit of the students, they really got some real world opportunities and real world experiences to apply their knowledge and training. So we were, were very happy with the results of the project. Um, and um, I'll, I'll answer any questions at the end and turn it back over to Gavin. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kara. I really appreciate it. Um, this slide has a bunch of cheese on it, which is making me very hungry because <laughs> it's about lunchtime. Uh, we're so glad uh, that we got a chance to work with uh, Green County and we actually took a trip down and visited Cheese Days. Uh, and we're really happy that we got a chance to know the community uh, well over the over the entire year. So thanks a lot, Kara, for uh, not just your presentation, but also your leadership in pulling everything together. Thank you. Um, Okay, uh, I'm gonna turn it over finally to Kevin Trushinsky, who's the Pepin County Land Conservation and Planning Office and a member of their economic development staff to talk about his experiences more recently in dealing with the university or program around uh, tourism marketing. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Kevin. Yeah, so I'm Kevin Trushinsky. I'm the administrative and outreach specialist for the Pepin County Land Conservation and Planning Department. And I also oversee all of the Visit Pepin County activities. And one of the projects that we worked on through the University Year program was a campaign program for creating tourism marketing products. So we had a large group of students come and actually visit with us for a day. They came and met with us here at the courthouse and got a nice overview of some of the communities around Pepin County. Uh, being the smallest county in Wisconsin, we have three communities, Durand, Pepin, and Stockholm. And we had representatives from each of those communities here to talk about some of their uh, assets that they have that they like to highlight for marketing purposes. And then the students actually got a chance to go around to these communities and explore them, take some pictures, and really work with those representatives from those communities to try and create some deliverables that we can use for tourism marketing. So one of the cool things about this project is that we received two really solid campaign strategies for tourism marketing that includes everything from just like demographic information and just some background info that we can use when we're trying to pitch ourselves to different developers or anybody that's asking for information, as well as we receive so much help with like advertising type things and social media. We got some radio spots and podcast ideas and even two new logos for Visit Pepin County, all sorts of fun stuff. So we received all of that and it's in a very malleable form that we can use in any which way that we need to. We've had it published in uh, some newspapers already and we've been using some of the strategies associated with that on our own social media accounts. And it's just been a very beneficial thing for us. I've got businesses that are asking us about some of the deliverables that we've identified here, like postcards and things like that, that they'd like to be able to offer for sale in their own businesses as a way to kind of promote Pepin County. So it's overall been probably the best project that we had from this entire university project. And it was a pleasure to work with those students in order to create these uh, campaign books. And we've gotten a lot of really good feedback from around the community. So Overall, this has been just a fantastic project for us and for Pepin County as a whole. 
Great. Thank you so much, Kevin. I really appreciate you talking about the projects that we did. And uh, I agree. I mean, some really great visuals. If anybody is looking for a good example of a project, uh, this is definitely one of them. I have to give a shout out to Doug McLeod, who's in journalism and communications, who uh, headed up that project. I know Kara also worked with that group. Um, and uh, yeah, several of our community partners kind of rave about the work that Doug McLeod and his students do. And um, and we're in kind of a good groove where we keep working with them over a period of time uh, with other university year partners. So uh, if Doug is watching, thank you so much, Doug McLeod in journalism and communication. Um, got the thumbs up from Kara as well. We, we absolutely love working with your students. Um, so uh, as kind of a closing thing before we go into questions and answers, um, you know, anybody who's watching this, who's connected to a local government, um, you are encouraged to apply to be a university year partner. Um, applications will be available on the website. Um, obviously, you can see that website here. They're usually due in July. They'll come out uh, later in March. The applications will come out. But uh, I mean, we what we ask for really are, are four things. Um, information from your community, um, document that you actually support bringing us into your community. And that doesn't mean just like one random person who says, I think this is a good idea, but instead, you know, ideally an elected official, ideally a mayor or a city uh, administrator or something like that. Ideally some for-profit and nonprofit groups who really support the idea of bringing us into the community. We only want to go where people really want to work with us, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, but also, you know, if, if one person just gets the wild hair idea, that, that's not really sufficient. So we want to see some sort of documentation um, that there is support. Um, also, projects and issues that you anticipate working on, that's how we ultimately select who we work with. If, if, there, if we just don't have a lot of great fits and great matches, then we can't really uh, do a good job of working with your community. Um, although that's always not, uh, not always a non-starter as well, we've also worked with the network of uh, universities and colleges across the state of Wisconsin, such as UW-River Falls, UW-Green Bay, UW-Stevens Point, Marquette University, UW-Milwaukee, to actually, uh, and actually one time, University of Oregon took on a project from us um, one time uh, this past year. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we, we do have a network of people that we can try to get you connected with. Um, and then finally, something that we didn't really talk too much about, but all the local governments that you heard from actually put up money to participate in this program. Um, this is important because we feel like uh, communities who pay um, actually have skin in the game and they take this pretty seriously. If you have to go to your city council or your village board or your county commission or county board um, and say, hey, we want money for this, um, you can pretty much bet that they're gonna be willing to dedicate staff time um, to make sure that this goes well. So uh, so there is a financial contribution that we do ask for. If anybody has particular questions about that, we can get them get to them in the question and answer period. Um, this is my contact information. If anybody is curious about what we do, this is our social media. We only do Twitter, sorry, we don't do Facebook. Um, and uh, this is our, our, our contact information. So I would certainly encourage you all um, to reach out and at this point, I'm going to th I think I'm going to turn over to Fran uh, to kick us off with questions. Yeah, Gavin, thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Fran Paleo Moyer. I'm the Badger Talks Live producer. Uh, what a great lineup and how impressive the work that all of you have done and the utilization of our student base. I mean, you guys just hit it out of the park in terms of the work and the impact around our state. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to encourage people to post questions in the chat right now. Um, and thank you for going over the cost piece a little bit, because I know that certainly things, uh, questions will be arising around that. And so Gavin, uh, elaborating on that just a little bit more, is that just based on the amount of projects that, uh, that a county or city does, or how is that determined? Yeah, we typically do, uh, I'm sorry, of course, as soon as I took myself off mute, my dryer stopped and buzzed. <laughs> sorry, everyone. Working from home, <laughs> a real moment here. Live um, TV. <laughs> yeah, this is live. Uh, that's right. Tuesday afternoon live um, with Badger Talks Live. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, the cost, the way that it works is that um, we ask people to contribute based on a thematic area. So a thematic area might be sustainability, 
water quality. This is kind of how we introduced the project. So economic development was one thematic area. We asked people to contribute somewhere between twenty to thirty thousand dollars per thematic area, which guarantees them at least five to seven project matches. Now, in some, in the best case scenario, Fran, we'll be able to pull in more than just five to seven matches. For instance, with Green County, um, I'm thinking, Kara, we we probably had like fifteen matches with the health area from your Healthy Communities Coalition that you all pitched to us because we work with Barb Durst, Masters of Public Health class, and they had to take on a bunch of different projects. So um, we kind of hit pay dirt with, with, uh, with that. So we, we guarantee five to seven matches, but it doesn't stop just at five to seven matches. And I think what all the community members will be able to tell you, really the, the limit is going to be on how much staff time that you have available to dedicate to this program. Um, you know, I, I've actually had communities tell me like, gosh, I, I almost wish we would have taken on fewer projects because, you know, you kept throwing projects at us and you kept matching um, and we just like don't have the ability to oversee all those projects. So anyway, yeah, friend, that's a long way of saying it's twenty to $30,000 per five to seven projects. But we've had people even pitch one project and we'll, you know, we'll work something out usually around $5,000 per project. Um, but yeah, so that's generally what it is. Okay, that's great. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, let's see, a question and a comment in from Carrie S. Benson. One of the things we are wanting to do is create a regional green belt to market several of our rural communities collectively as part of a sustainably progressive region that links our natural resource history with our human culture resources. Would you consider working regionally with several aligned communities? And then she goes on to say, we're looking at the tomorrow Wapaka River Corridor communities linking Nelsonville, Amherst, Wapaka, and Wyoiga. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in fact, uh, I just had a conversation with a regional planning commission that works across a 10 county uh, region. I don't want to say who yet because I don't know if they're actually going to um, you know, work with us or not, but um, just had a conversation about a potential rural transportation strategy across a 10 county area. We are definitely open to doing that. And in fact, this year, we, our marketing class, our journalism communication, creative campaign messages class, Doug McLeod's class, uh, worked on projects for Wisconsin Rapids, Adams County, and Wood, Adams, and Juno together. So we did kind of a joint marketing project um, across three counties. Um, and that's one of the first times that we've actually done something across, you know, multiple counties. So I would say like increasingly, yes, we are interested in doing things like that. Um, of course, the, the question for uh, the person who asked the, who asked the question, the question will be, do those particular leaders all want to get involved? Um, we do not bend arms, you know, twist arms or anything like that to, you know, beg people to be involved with us. I would say, though, if there is documented support um, for getting involved, we'd absolutely be happy to work across a multi-county region. Great. Thanks so much, Gavin. And Carrie's asking who she should contact to follow up. Uh, I'm assuming contact me. Information. <laughs> yeah, she and can then, contact me. Great. And that's Gavin at cows.org, C-O-W-S dot O-R-G. Uh, so I have a question for you. Are, are, are there other states uh, like Wisconsin that have a program as robust as we do, or are we unique? Uh, uh, very good question. Uh, I wish I could say we're totally unique, but we're actually not. Um, this is part of a network. Uh, if if anybody is particularly interested, it's called the Educational Educational Partnerships for Innovations in Communities Network. Since that's a mouthful, we just say Epic N for short. E P I C N, the uh, letter N. dot org. Um, you all can find out a little bit more. So there are about seventy programs operating around the world who subscribe to this model. Um, there is a, uh, a program at Augustana College, uh, which is in, I think, the Quad Cities region. Um, and then we, there's also a program at University of Minnesota. Those are the closest programs to us. Um, but we also have colleagues at University of South Florida, University of Oregon, um, uh, San Diego State University, um, so yeah, a bunch of different programs out there. University of Iowa also has a program. They're also very close to us. Um, so yeah, I, I wish I could say we're totally unique, um, but we are unique in the sense that we're the only program that makes this a three-year partnership um, because I think the Wisconsin idea really runs through our veins and we 
need to do this for longer than just a year because we owe so much to the communities that we uh, have here in Wisconsin that we want to have a longer term partnership with them. So we are unique in that sense, but there is a network of people out there doing this. So for those who might be curious, like, gosh, this should be happening elsewhere. It is happening elsewhere. And we'd love if more universities and colleges would subscribe to the model. Excellent. Thank you. We do have a uh, viewer tuning in, Ruth Fitzgerald, tuning in from Northern Ireland and the UK. She's asking if there'll be projects that reach the UK, but. Um. <laughs> I wish uh, that would, that would go be global. Uh, yeah, that would, that, I, but I will say there are, when I say there are 70 programs around the world, there are, I mean, we have programs in, in Africa, we have programs in South America and Latin America. Um, and uh, we would absolutely welcome the opportunity. In fact, I, I recently had a phone call with the University of Rennes in France uh, to see if they'd be interested in, in working with us to kind of uh, share information. We were going to go to a conference with them and COVID happened, but um, we are very, very eager um, to talk to people. So if, if you're your viewer out there, if, if, you're, if you're listening right now, if you have a contact at a local college or university, or you have an idea how we might be able to partner here uh, between our classes and your local community, I'm, I'm all ears. I think things like that are pretty cool. Excellent. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll close out with Ellen Marks Hossman left a comment who said, love your enthusiasm, Gavin. As do <laughs> So thank you everybody uh, for sharing all of the information around all of these important projects. We were thrilled to have you on Badger Talks Live today. Everybody be sure to tune in next week, Tuesday, March 2nd at noon. We're gonna be featuring Wisconsin Public Radio's classical radio host, Stephanie Elkins, who's gonna be talking about prominent female black composer, Florence Price. So please tune in for that show. And as always, visit badgertalks.wisc.edu where you can see our upcoming schedule of talks. You can also sign up for our email list and consider a donation to future programming. And feel free to request a speaker for your very own event that you wanna host. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you next week.